everyone this is Amy welcome to my channel today I'm going to show you a real pretty floral design that I'm creating with a magic flat brushes using a 16 a 14 and a 12 then I'm going to be using a number 8 Deerfoot stippler and my uh, Westonia fine liner paints I'm using today are all folk art paints using yellow ochre burnt umber Thicket, Happy Green, Wicker White, and Tea Berry. Now, all these items I've listed down below my video in affiliate links. If you'd like to purchase through those, please feel free to do so. And we are going to get started. Don't forget, if you like this video, before you leave, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I create something new. I'd appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna use my Deerfoot stippler. I'm gonna tip it into the yellow ochre and then the back end of it, the heel of it, it goes into the burnt umber and then I tap it off. I'm gonna create some centers to begin with just to align my design. You can always tap them in after you paint but I like to use them as kind of a guide. So they don't have to be perfect because I will be going over them. And I'm going to do three blooms. I like to work in odd numbers. So if I ever create something in an equal number, it's just because I couldn't get it to fit. Didn't have as much room as I do on my paper. And I work typically just with a single flower. Sometimes I'll do designs that have multi, but most of the time you're going to find single. And that's primarily because I'm trying to just show you how to do a design. You can, of course, anytime combine flowers. All right, I'm taking the 16, and you can either double load or you can just put it into the tea berry. Either way and create and go back over it with some white, however you want to do it. All right, so I'm going to turn, I'm on the chisel edge, I'm going to turn my brush sideways and I'm going to push down and pull towards the center. All right, and I, when I'm doing this design, I can make them big, longer, shorter, fatter, skinnier throughout the process. They don't all have to be the same, just so you know can give it more interest if you vary them. And I'm just going to do one row of petals. I'm not going to do like on top of them, like another section of petals. And I like them to be kind of sparse, just like that. Now I can go back over, add some white. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I might end up, because it's close together, end up having them overlap. So this way, if I go ahead and put my white on, I don't have to worry about that. Basically complete one and then you can come back over it if you think it has too much white or you just want to make sure It's more opaque that you've got really good coverage. You can do that All right, just like that Then I'm going to come back over to the next one or come over, I should say not back over. And just do create the same. And I am pulling in some color from the other flower. And that's fine. So you can do it like that, just a quick pull. Or you can do a slower one.
And this is the bottle, if you're new. I, I like to create designs. I actually sell a lot of bottles, but I create designs on this bottle just to do the videos with. But I do also do some that are on bottles that I sell. This is just easier to do it this way right now. I think this bottle makes a good, good one to learn from, or learn on, I should say. All right, so we're finishing up with the last one. This is what I'm talking about because I actually knew how close they were together, then I would be overlapping on them. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and make sure I had all the paint on them that I wanted to put so that I wouldn't have to try to go back over on them and then be overlapping. Wouldn't be good. Very simple though. That's what I plan. All my designs are meant to be easy. Any of my designs can be painted on other surfaces. You don't have to paint them on glass. These are just to give you an idea of what can be done. Just very simple. I'll get this a little straighter there. Maybe put a little more white in there. And the thing of it is with these, this type of designs, you can plan it to where you figure out where the light's gonna hit it and then go from there with adding stuff or you can just do like I do and just put the colors however they end up. You never know. I'm not real precise, so I don't really care if they make sense or not. If they look the way I want them to look, that's what I'm concerned about. All right, so I'm using my fine liner. I stick my fine liner in and kind of pull it out, roll the brush as I'm doing it, just to get some, I can always tip it in to the colors. Also as I'm painting, just to get a better, um, combination of colors because they don't always, you know, I like to do the, I'm just kind of doing these like a little wavy at times here. But I like to make them show up, especially when I'm doing it on a green surface. Sometimes that can be hard to see. And I'll just pull it, put both colors down, add more color, whatever needs to be done. And I tend to use these two colors a lot for my leaves. If you want to use different colors, by all means, please do. You know, my leaves and stems, I just like these colors. I typically always use a thicket. The second color can vary. And that's just because I, I'm just going to do it like that. It doesn't have to be a swirly. This is just something I'm going to put leaves down on. And I'm just doing this just to make it a little more, I don't know, free, free flowing, whimsical, however you want to look at it. All right, so I have that going on. I am going to go ahead and hit this with the heat gun. I'll be right back. So the next thing I'm going to do is load my number 14 brush with the thicket and the happy green. I can of course put maybe some yellow in it. It, it, it doesn't really matter. You can always put two or three colors, four colors into it, however, however you want to proceed. I am going to, let's see, let's do one here. I'm going to do it with the, I'm going to make like a V here. I'm going to do it with just a real wiggly, if I can get it to do it, leaf. And oops. and I'll come down here, just pull the line through. I can do either way as far as the happy green or the thicket. I can do one or two leaves. There's not a whole lot of space here, so I'm just going to probably put in a few wherever I see a space open. 
I am going to go over the flour. I did actually hit it with a heat gun, but you know that will dry it a little bit, but not fully. So you still can see some underlying colors, but just fine, not a big deal. And you can also put down some leaves if you want as a background. Just know that unless you give it some dry time, you possibly will see some of this, the colors from underneath. I'm not going to worry about that. This is not a bottle I'm selling, just one that I'm showing you how to do stuff on, so I'm not going to be too picky about it. Go ahead and put one in here and do like a slight and just wiggle, slight blending stroke and wiggle. Slight blend. Bleh. Blending stroke, goodness, getting tongue tied here. And wiggle and bring it through. I like when they kind of vary in color, gives a little more interest. Put that there, and I can even put another one here, just maybe a smaller one. And this one looks like it's going to pull a lot of the pink from underneath, so. I'm just gonna like that. It can be pretty when you pull up some color from underneath. I mean, it definitely gives a different type of a look. Definitely. If you don't like as many leaves as I'm using, then leave them out. Pure and simple, leave them out. And just in real simple wiggles. And it's okay that I'm going over these stems because I am going to do some other leaves in here. And if you want to get up closer to the, the leaf and do like on some of these stems, you can just know that it's very possible you're going to pull up color from underneath. That one's kind of white, so I'm going to go back over it with some green. Some happy green. There you go. And let's see here. I might just, nah. I'm going to go ahead and put my other one in, and then I'll t decide if I need to put any more. That's, that's a benefit of doing this, too. Okay, on the next one, I'm going to take the number 12. I'm going to put it into the yellow ochre. While I'm doing this, I'm going to put this on to my design, if I feel like I need to have more paint on it, then I, I might add some white. White is always a good color to add to a paint because it'll make it more opaque. But it's okay. If it's not opaque, just have to know that it won't be as durable, but it can still be like shadow leaves or ghost leaves, whatever you want to call them. Or you can always go back over them, if you wish. Like that. And this kind of fills it in. And you have these these little leaves, kind of. I'll just pretend that it comes down here. It's got a lot of color in it. Then I'm going to take my liner brush, stick it into the greens again, just like I did before. And this is where I come through. I'm going to use this color because I like this color. I'm going to come through and add the little attachments, the little stems, and just pretend like it, there's some coming up from underneath there. Like that. Hopefully I'm on the camera here. I'm kind of floating around and looking at what I'm doing. Sorry because we have this leaf right here. 
I'm just going to pretend that the leaf that we're, or the stem that we're pulling it from is running underneath there. You can actually do some extra lines just to just make it a little bit more flowing. If you see what I'm saying here, or understand what I'm saying here. Just kind of cute. I hope you like this video. I'm just gonna keep doing it, keep working it. And this one will come under there and go in there. And they're just kind of free, whimsical. Pull it into there, just like that. Doesn't matter that we have extra little stems going here and that's fine. One last thing I would do, because I always like to do this, and again with this I might pull in some color from, oops, I didn't want to do that, the yellow ochre and the burnt umber to complete the centers. I do a lot of times put white in my centers just to give it a, a little bit of a highlight. Taking in some of that, and I just can kind of lean back on this brush and put in some brown. I can make it, you know, bigger, thicker. Add to it, and you can find that you can, when you're doing these, that you might want to just keep working them until you get them to look the way you want them. Up to you. And if you notice, they're not all going the same direction, which is fine. Flowers don't necessarily all grow going in the same direction. And there you go. Very easy. All right. I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell prior to leaving. And also, there's a, a share button that you'll find underneath the video. I would be so grateful if you would share this video on your social network with your family and friends. I am trying to grow my channel, and I would appreciate your help. All right. Thanks again for taking the time to come to my channel. Until the next time, please stay safe and healthy and have a good one.